not eating. I am full. <laughs> but I will be drinking a crisp Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> a crisp, cool, clean Coca-Cola. <laughs> the mini kind. Uh all right, excellent. Okay, I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know the this is one of my I love this so much because it gets me every time. You know the Coca Cola ads in the front of the movies where it's like you hear it open, crack open, and mm-hmm. then the image is the top <laughs> half of the glass and the ice goes into the glass this and it is clicks not a paid around. Advertisement. No, of course it's not a paid advertisement. <laughs> we Coke wish. would never we sponsor do wish, me. We do wish that. <laughs> I would love for Coke <laughs> to pay me, but Coke will never pay me. Uh, but that one gets me every time. Like I'm sitting there gripping my mm. armrest, like I want to cook so bad. Gets me every time. But otherwise, but otherwise, I don't drink a whole lot of sodas, and I have some nice, uh, crisp, clean, cool Culligan water in my insulated cup here. Well, way to make me look bad. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's not a competition. We're both thoroughly enjoying these things. Correct. Well, good to see you. Uh, Luke, it is excellent to see you. Thanks for sitting down with me today. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess we should start the show. Uh, my name is Thomas. This is the KAAMP. That is the Knoxville Area Artist Network and Platform Podcast thing. And today we're sitting here with uh, Luke Love, friend of mine, fellow yes, artist, sir. fellow Knoxville area person. New Knoxvillian. And new Knoxvillian. Yeah. I guess the, the driver's license says Knoxville now. Well, what it says the local area. We don't Correct. have to get too specific. Yeah. But um, Alcoa is where I'm at, a little bit south. Well, that's the I Knoxville area part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> See, I'm new. I'm not sure what people will get mad about. Like, I'm a, I'm a Merville. No. Well, <laughs> yeah. As long as you don't say Maryville, yeah, I think yeah. we're fine. All right, good. I did, I did good. Together. <laughs> but, Luke, um, Beyond that, uh, tell people who you are, what you do, how you do it, and then we'll dig in. Sure, yeah. No, my name is Luke Love. I came up here with the desire to be an artist full-time. So my grandmother has lived here for a long time, so Knoxville drew me up here to kind of set up roots with her. But I love it here. I want to become, you know, a muralist and a painter and I was an elementary art teacher prior to that, a lot like your previous um, person you had on the podcast. Shout out to Mallory. But yeah, no, so I mean, I, my art career was not like many else's. I'm not sure how if we're going to get into that off bat, but uh, I didn't start painting till I was in college. So had zero, I'd never like as a kid was never like, oh, I'm going to be an artist. Like I never said that to my parents, I think one time ever, like, <laughs> yeah, like it was a complete shock to them. So you never gave happened. them that heart attack? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they, yeah, the, they had the heart attack of like me never really knowing what I wanted to do. So yeah, I don't think I gave attack. them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they still had one, but it was just like me just kind of coasting through. Cause they never, I never wanted for anything. So I'll never was like, you know, I never like re- super reached for the stars at that young age. It, it like kind of took time for that to develop like sports and otherwise. But yeah, so in college is when I finally like, you know, reclaimed my artistic desires. But um, I will say that it took um, playing a lot of video games at the time for me to have the epiphany. So I, I remember it pretty clearly. It was just like college student. I was at, going to college to be a teacher, actually. So my that was just eventually what I came to decide on when it was like, I guess I'll go for this because I knew I'd be good at it, but it was math that I wanted to be a teacher for. But eventually, I just came to a point where I wanted all my time, my extra time spent outside of being in college to go towards something that was actually productive. So it was like an epiphany (laughs) day where I was like, oh, I played Call of Duty all night. And I was like, what do I have to show for this? And it was nothing. Like, it was like, I had... Well, if you don't have an esports trophy, then... Yeah, yeah. Like, (laughs) yeah, did I have the new, like, camouflage skin for my gun? Like, no, like, that didn't matter to me anymore. And I was like... I know that painting was a thing that if you started putting your time into it and you started now and you didn't stop and you worked toward it forever, that it would always get better. Like you'll get better and better and better and better and better. So I was like, I knew that I enjoyed painting and that it was a thing. And it literally was a conscious decision that I was going to start painting that day and like never stop. And that was in college, like 2016, I believe. 
and I just started, you know, painting for Christmas presents, painting little things, you know, really, really terribly. Like they were really bad, but <laughs> it was fun and I enjoyed it and it saved me money on gifts. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of how it grew from there. But uh, I will, and then, <laughs> they weren't that bad. I mean, my sister, my little sister got the, got a couple of my first original paintings. But I knew that I wanted to be an artist probably the first time that I sold a painting. So if you really want to do that, you need to put yourself out there. You got to go to a craft fair. You got to, you know, see how it does in front of people. You know, take criticism to the face is definitely something you got to start doing. But and it's so difficult to do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's, the, <laughs> that's the worst part. There's so much that it takes. And like, that's definitely what I started doing right off the bat. Like when my paintings were terrible, I was like, I could probably sell this. You know, it's like I've always had a selling mentality and i knew that it's something i wanted to do so it was like i would paint something and i would like my first painting that i sold for a hundred dollars i'll never forget it's it was like my favorite painting ever it was i wanted to be the artist that was this will be the best day ever was my catchphrase kind of from mac miller i grew up with him so that's a different story but and all of my paintings at the time had that catchphrase this will be the best day ever and I, I know, and I envisioned myself doing that for my whole career, and I sold that for hundred dollars, and that was the best feeling. I was like, I want to do this, but hooked, hooked, <laughs> yeah, hooked. hooked. <laughs> like even if it's only for a hundred dollars, but that was the best hundred dollars I ever made for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I know that feeling quite a bit. That that like first bit, that first taste of success, when you're just. I've I've done this and now I have to flip it and do like the sales part and be out like the first successful outing under the umbrella of as, as an artist right. is like such a bittersweet thing. Like I'm pretty sure my first craft show, you know, like Sunday market or whatever it was, I happened to find That's myself scary, in. man. It's a lot of work. You're already invested. You're behind the start. And then you're also putting yourself out there. Like So not only is like your your soul on display with whatever you brought to sell, mm -hmm. you also have to sell it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like somebody's gonna come up to you and need to be sold well that's the thing i would sit i would walk around and i would see people on their phones in the back of their booth kind of looking down like not really engaging people and then mm -hmm. but me you'd come to my booth i'd be barefoot i would have music playing i would be painting with some kids like on the carpet you know like talking about creating art which is another thing that i did at my craft fairs which completely kept me alive and uh, so like I would draw people in and of course by this time like you got to talk about the color you can't see me but I'm covered in paint and always covered in color mm -hmm. in some aspect a big part of my creative you'll have, to, you'll have to give me a good image to go with the, the episode <laughs> yeah 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 I'll, I'll get you something that'll like <laughs> put it to an idea but uh, another thing that I like to do is the young Picassos, which I'll shout out with the platform here. But uh, at my craft fair fairs is I'd like to share the, you know, the joy that comes with creative expression. You know, that moment of aha, where you're like, oh, my God, did I make this? Like, I'm getting chills, you know, thinking about it because I like to sh like share that with kids as m much as I can. And the sooner you can put that in their head, the better it is. For oh, them. yeah. No, it's awesome. Like if I didn't do if I don't do anything, the fact is like I have, you know, evidence where I've created artwork with kids that I've never painted before ever. And I'm like, like, no, it's easy. Like and they're I'll just stoked. Yeah, no, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. It's like, yeah, no, it's easy. Like I'll show you. Just put this down. I'll use a palette knife. Just give them a little dot of color on it. And, you know, just tell them to push and swipe and, you know, and maybe direct them where to go with it. And then by the end of it, they got a nice little little painting. So that is a big part of my creative calling and what I like to do with my craft too, which also kept me afloat. I would not sell a single original at some of my craft fairs, but I would sell 400 of, or not like $400 worth, like 20 of these paintings that I'd done with kids. And like, that's kept me alive through that time, which is awesome. I love it. Well, it's also like, as a parent, <laughs> you know, like you, you got the kid. It's oh, almost yeah. like, and then I give him my business card and I say, I, I make all these paintings too. Yeah. For sure. mm -hmm. But like you get the kid hooked and then they look at mom or dad and they're just like, but, 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 and then it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's usually 
I mean, really it's like only twenty dollars. You can do some chores for twenty dollars, like right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like what you got? Yeah, and, th- and this <laughs> and this painting lasts forever. Like you can give this to your kids. Like <laughs> like mm-hmm. this will be around. Another thing I love about art is like it'll be around forever and ever. Like if you're just it's kept just in a room, like. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I'm talking a lot. <laughs> well, I'm done stuffing my face now. All right, too. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, since you weren't like four years old when you started doing creative stuff, mm-hmm. if I ask you if you specifically remember the first thing you ever arted, would, would that be an easy thing for you to answer? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I can. I can think of the f- first time, because I was thinking about this earlier, like I sold art which was way younger than I like could remember unless I thought about this question. So in sixth grade, I think that was 2006. I remember getting my hand, like seeing a duct tape wallet. Oh, a yeah. Duct tape wallet? A duct tape wallet. Like no, one I of my friends. Yeah. I will like, if I get jacked like, every time. Like, I, I fell in love with it immediately. And then like, that was the time when people were wearing duct tape prom, like yeah, yeah, complete yeah. suits of, to prom out of duct tape and i like just remember getting captivated by that and i was like i'm gonna get like different colored duct tape and like at that age like ordered like shout out to my parents like ordered all the different colored duct tape that you can get and the zebra I just started, and the cheetah and all the yeah all the different things. colors <laughs> yeah all the patterns and i started like my duct tape journey i made shoes shoes yeah like i i like put my shoes on cardboard cut the cardboard soles out wrapped it in duct tape put duct tape around it like one percent cardboard 99 percent duct tape shoes i made a satchel backpack and a top hat a top hat yeah and a vest and i wore it (laughs) (laughs) and i wore it to like my sixth grade dance what a baller yeah oh goodness i was like the duct tape man but then i had all these colored duct tapes and i would take like this is what got me in trouble i would take like a (laughs) a strip of a colored duct tape and i would fold it in half you know like perfectly and then I would tape it with that same color around somebody's wrist and yeah. I would sell it for a dollar. <laughs> so now like they have to. <laughs> so I was selling like these little colored like accessories. Like I would have all different colored duct tape. So people's outfits, they would come to me and they'd be like, yo, you got like pink or like blue. Like, I, yeah, I got all you need, dude. Like, I, yeah. And I'd like so open in your my du- backpack. And... <laughs> in your duct tape backpack <laughs> full of duct tape, I've got all of your fashion yeah, accessories. I got, I got what you need and I'd sell a little, <laughs> d- sell a little bracelet for a dollar. But uh, yeah, that's, that's round upon in the school system. You can't solicit your own what system. commerce. <laughs> yeah, you what can, you can't do that. So that's I mean, so yeah, that was like the first time I remember like selling something that I made, you yeah. know, and like I, which is all grew from that for sure. I kind of lost track of it in high school, with like soccer and other stuff. But you know, eventually it came around to get me again. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> like I remember doing this. <laughs> like yeah, this is nice this is fun create something and then see what you can get for it so i mean like and it's i just it's i just need me. to see like a 13 year old you in this backpack hawking yeah bracelets. And it had, it had I need like to see it had stuffing in the shoulder pad because it like got heavy yeah. and like so i would like made a like shoulder pad pocket like a, <laughs> and like stuff with stuffing in it with with the duct tape like i was i was creating stuff man like if they never stopped me, I'd probably be a duct t- like a millionaire from from my <laughs> duct tape business if I didn't so run into the law. So what you're saying is they squandered this desire of yours. Mm-hmm. They snuffed it. They out. St- the man got me <laughs> right then and there. They they got me. The man. And I went back to like, oh, I'll be a teacher, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. So you are formally trained and educated as an artist and an educator no so no formal training as an artist okay. whatsoever so that was a misunderstanding of no mine. my bachelor's degree is in early childhood and special education and i wanted to be a math teacher but then during college the video game epiphany occurred yeah. and like i turned pivoted and did started painting and then saw a job for an art teacher you know, then the snowballed into being an art teacher. Like, it just all felt right at the time. I was like, oh, like, that was my dream job. Like, I saw art teacher. I was like, oh, I'll, I bet I'll get that. And then I got it. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, my God. And, like, the f- I'll never forget the first. <laughs> like, it's like it went from your dream job to reality so quick. <laughs> so quick with that job. Yeah. But but why uh, math? Well, it was easy. It's like pu- <laughs> it's like puzzles. That's a g- good question. I don't know. Math people get it. You know, it's like. <laughs> yeah the math people are like oh yeah yeah math 
I think it was a testament to me being homeschooled until third grade and like doing middle school math with my mom and then yeah. going into public third grade and then school is just easy. Like school is easy. Get homeschooled till third grade, do middle school stuff and then go to public school, like education and then Cake. coast through it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the blueprint. That's, that's the secret. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. School is always like all A's all through school, never worried about it. And it's like, but it also made me never really focus on it, you know? Yeah, because it was just a thing you could do pretty mm-hmm. well. It's like never, a means never... to an end. I was like, oh, I go to school, I'll, I'll leave school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll be fine. Never got in trouble till the duct tape. But... <laughs> <laughs> and like, that's such a not malicious thing to get in trouble for, too. Oh, and that's then in so ninth much... grade, everybody started trying to sell candy, you know? Like, yeah. So I was Talk about a hustle. I was definitely half on, on that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Did always they get always being a hustle, like still trying to hustle, but now it's like art and like my soul. So, <laughs> <laughs> so how, how did um, the video games and what came after the, the first art teaching job? The, that's what brought me here to Knoxville. That's a great question. So it was uh, COVID, of course. So my first year of teaching was 2019, and then my second year of teaching was COVID. <laughs> <laughs> you just got your feet wet as yeah. a as a pro teacher, and then the world turns upside mm-hmm. down. And then I'm teaching online classes, which I was like, I can get on board with this. You know what I mean? Because like I can boot kids. Like they gave me the freedom to boot kids that were being inappropriate or whatever. So just next thing you know, I got like. Seven, eight of my favorite students that like art, like in a in a setting where I can actually do what I like. I don't know, but uh, yeah. So after, but after all that, and trying to get back into normal teaching, it was just a lot. Yeah. And by then, my dream has changed. Like I don't hold on. I won't stay in some. I won't do something I don't want to do. Like yeah, I've been told that by multiple people. Like <laughs> you really don't do stuff you don't want to do. I'm like, it's like yeah. If I'm not interested in it, you ain't gonna catch yeah, me. Yeah, I'm not like, gonna be there that long. No. So I started like the wheels started turning. Like how do I? And like I was teaching art classes. Like I would have these epiphanies where I'm like teaching about an artist where like all they did was paint, like Van Gogh or something. Like anybody you talk about like that, that's like oh they painted like seventy thousand paintings. You're only seeing one percent. All he all he did yeah. was paint. And like eventually you like get one percent that might be timeless or whatever so it's like all those wheels are just like i just keep painting keep painting keep painting i just want to paint and like and then covid you save a bunch of money during that time so i got a little <laughs> nest egg and i'm yeah. like i can probably quit my job and be an art like i want to just do a craft fair a weekend two craft fair a weekend and like just be a painter for like a whole year like a year at least and like if i knew i needed so that's where my knoxville and this nest egg of a place that you're sitting in right now yeah. comes in where my grandmother this, this cozy lives ass here. House. <laughs> yeah, my little sister was here, but she got a boyfriend, moved out, and there was a vacancy. And I was like, can I come? Can I take over your garage as my art studio? Which was the biggest stipulation because she loves her her property and her home. But she she opened up the garage to me, and I, I moved in. That was about a, almost two years ago, I guess, now. Yeah, so I was able to live rent-free and just, you know, do craft fairs for an entire year and just, like like i wasn't really making money wasn't really losing money you know just living as yeah. an artist and like i i wouldn't have changed it for the world it was awesome but uh you know money runs out and then <laughs> <laughs> Things, the, the <laughs> like i wasn't ar- i was an artist like i'm not saying i was successful off the bat so <laughs> <laughs> but eventually you know i had to get you know no more like daytime job and put all my free time into it as possible which is what you got to do but super grateful for it like you're sitting around some of my paintings here in my in my living room that have taken me through my different styles which is another part of my artistic journey so like right now i'd be considered myself a finger painter like so i feel like that's unique in the realm yeah we'll get there because yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's like oh, so, well <laughs> i mean you and i had a, a short private conversation about that and i've i've wanted to pick your brain about it a little more so we'll get there i got you but um i'll digress that is <laughs> that is where i've ventured into but yeah and you don't see any of those in here like i started just like with the brush and the normal route well when you to touch on that private conversation you and i were talking about it and you're just like yeah i hate brushes I, I, <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like what do you mean you hate brushes like this was the most foreign thing i'd ever heard as someone that uses brushes all the time and likes to emulate aesthetics that require a very specific type of brush and brush work and you're mm-hmm. over there just like nah screw them <laughs> like right, now, right now thinking about my brushes in my studio is like giving me anxiety thinking about where they're at and what they're like no they're unusable so you know that hit me like 
a stray golf ball or something, you know, sting. And I'm like, what? And that I was so entertained because I have such a connection to brushes. And you were like, no, I hope I never see one again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just so such the opposite end of the spectrum. But then you and I got to talking about why you feel this way about your, your brushes or lack thereof. And then it all made sense. Yeah. It's uh yeah stems from <laughs> me not treating them like I, like I like them. I yeah. guess you wrote them hard and put them up wet, yeah. and the second time you grabbed them, they weren't right. Yeah, yeah. So you said, "Screw it! I've got ten good brushes on the end of my finger, or, you know, on the end of my fingers," and that's where you took off with. Exactly. Well, it went from brushes to like palette knives, which are easier to clean. You yeah, know what I much mean? easier. Yeah. yeah. But then I still got dirty palette knives everywhere. You know. <laughs> darn yeah so eventually it was like i just want to just put the paint on the canvas just as efficiently as possible with the least amount of cleanup <laughs> but but then, but then you look like this <laughs> least amount of cleanup man's covered in paint <laughs> well, this, is my, this is my paint outfit you're right but it's it's changing the irony is there it does require some changing throughout the day <laughs> unless <laughs> but yeah so the so the fingers the fingers you feel like that is the most um intuitive tool you've got well um when you want to make it as an artist people will tell you be distinct you know be distinct do something that no one else is doing so uh, the second i was started to paint with my fingers and like people liked them i was like okay nobody else is doing this and i even got told by that like no one else is doing this you know like and I was like, okay, so I've just decided to lean into that. And it's been about a year of that, of me just leaning in to that identity. I, I think it's unique. I think it has texture and depth. I think it has everything I want a painting to have. And it's like, yeah, and I created it literally with just my paint and my hand. And, and there's I, and there's I there's no it. degrees of separation there. No, it's literally like my finger I'm... is raw, like it's raw down, like it's a little red. There's no like fingerprint there like if they fingerprinted my right finger <laughs> my right finger they'd be like oh this is like an a survive <laughs> this he does not exist so i guess that's kind of good <laughs> well, yeah forensic evidence all over the place yeah yeah <laughs> but and- i, I just want to f- keep pushing my art forward like and that's kind of what led to my fingers just what's next what's what can i do what's next like that's that's it and like when we met it was at the the psych show you we met on Instagram. Yeah. you're like yeah i want to, i'm interested in putting you on this show and i was there with another contestant there shout out like blaine i think his name yeah, was blaine. yeah who had like the 3d glasses which is like another thing that sent me down a huge rabbit hole in my art <laughs> and yeah just like yeah we were watching you like trip out on it the whole yeah <laughs> i was like oh my god there's more like there's there's more you can do with this and like uh, so I'm just I've just been enjoying the road and like but I definitely keep looking out for the finger painting because that's that's what it'll, you'll see from now on. But I do like to paint some murals as well. As well yeah, which yeah. Is so uh, hard to finger paint a mural. I told I, to, I don't know if I told you about it or if if you just found it and were like, hey, you're going, can I ride with you? But uh, the walls in in Waverly has been like a huge part of my artistic identity the last couple of years yeah, because that's, awesome. that's where I've done my biggest and most technical work I guess. Shout out the walls. Yeah, shout out to Kansas, shout out to Steven, shout out to the walls in Waverly if y'all don't know what it is, get hip because you No, I got. Thank you for that though. Like <laughs> yeah. we had never met before and I was like he was like going said he was going to this. I was like I want to go and I was like, "Yo, yeah, well, let me like you can I ride with you to and paint a wall. It was like, yeah. Yeah, I was like, here's the situation. It's me and my kid, and we're meeting my girlfriends, <laughs> and and everything's gonna be fine. Just so that's game. what's up. Let's go. Let me. I got my. Was, can you fit my paint? I think it was <laughs> yeah. my only question. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah, no, that was fun. Yeah. And then Creating you painted that giant wall of roses. Yeah, with, with a brush like a, a madman. I was a brush painter at that time. Never <laughs> like a again. Mad I think man. I had blisters. <laughs> yeah, you got there and you saw your wall and you're like, shit. <laughs> it was huge. It was so big. Never back down, never what? No, no, and you knocked it out that weekend, and it was great. And uh, I really wish somebody would commission you for one of those in their houses. Yeah, that if, was the goal. Dude, I didn't I get a taken... single no. There was two, I spent like maybe three hundred dollars on the paint and like forty eight hours straight of painting, 
this roses and not one single like no one even said hey i liked like i didn't get one thing uh, one thing bro. Well, like, it's if fine I, if i could have taken but that I, wall home i would have I, i'll take that back i didn't i got a lot from just knowing i could do it you know oh, yeah, like absolutely. me seeing it up there like i you know i was just the super internal proud of validation it. yeah yeah there. yeah like i take that back. don't don't make it sound like i wasn't like super <laughs> proud of myself i was like oh, that's fine so I have extra paint, by the way, if anybody wants. <laughs> yeah. oh. What is it, day Go 562 <laughs> of painting roses on the wall? <laughs> Luke, Luke Love underscore artwork, if you want to see the roses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell, tell, <laughs> we did, I forgot to tell you to tell people your internet handles $10 a square foot, you know. I'll, I'll show up. You know, the rest is free. I'll show up. I'll paint you all roses. Let's get it. And it'll be great. It will be great. Because <laughs> the first one was great, and he can do it again. Yeah, two, yeah, even in a time crunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had a weekend. How much did you sleep that weekend? Because I'm pretty sure I slept Not way long. more than you did. Yeah, yeah like, I was there at like 7 in the morning. I got up at the crack of dawn that like both days. Yeah, I was committed. To well, you stayed thing. really close, so that was a big help. Well, man, layers acrylic paint on a wall with a brush yeah yeah i don't recommend any, any sort of <laughs> the the next time you do such a thing you'll be better prepared <laughs> yeah spray paint on yeah. Spray, yeah. spray paint on a mural festival was was that was when i did that big uh shinron piece wasn't it with sean or yeah with the, with the salamander oh no that that was different sean yeah that yeah, was yeah. the like celestial salamander up on the hill uh shout out sean from nashville heady hardware but speaking of murals, I remember the first idea I had where I was like, I want to paint a mural. And like, I didn't know where to start. Like, how do you paint your first mural? And I got the idea to paint my first mural through a podcast, through Instagram, like where I was listening to an artist conversation. He was like, oh, well, I got my first mural through a thing called Workaway. And it's where you can look for people all over the world that are willing to trade accommodations for like for work and but it can be work that you're specifically looking for to do like paint a mural for instance oh is that where you had your international travels yeah and that's like how okay. i like painted my first mural and then how like you know you gain the confidence from there but it was like she got that like some a famous muralist now that i follow with like you know like 200 300 thousand followers on instagram you know like said that that's where she painted her first mural was like through a thing like work away and like I immediately looked it up, and next thing you know, I found a place in in Honduras. There's like I'm painting this school, and I need a classroom wall painted. Like looking for a painter, and like presented myself as a well-to-do muralist. <laughs> yeah, as as like, some, hello, yes, I can do this job. <laughs> as somebody should do who wants to paint uh. a wall, you know. And this, yeah, but uh, yeah, next thing you know, I'm in Honduras painting a mural. Like through a, from a listening to a podcast to a couple months later. Like, you know, it's funny how that happen. all works. Yeah. So yeah. that has a lot big a testament to like, you know, me quitting my job to move up here and be an artist, you know, like of just finding something online, going to Honduras to paint a mural. Like, yeah. just, to, just you got to do it. I, and it looked you, I, you had a grand old time. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. It was life changing experience. First time out of the country at 30 years old. So, I mean, you know. Had to be eventually, and I did it on my own terms. Fans were telling me not to do it. You know, there was a lot <laughs> of that. <laughs> yeah, it's dangerous. Don't go down there. It's dangerous. Why don't you get hurt? <laughs> you know? But it was it was pivotal in my art. Like I really think it was just to like show that I could go places with it, like I dreamed of. You know, yeah. like like you always dream of. Oh, like I'm gonna sell a painting and travel the world, or like I'm gonna get paid to go paint a mural in a country. Like I dreamed of it, and then here I was doing it. You know, with little little effort, it felt like, you know, like not really even. Well, I mean, I guess that's just another one of those things in your life that just sort of fell yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. It's a testament to that. Yeah. So I definitely, as soon as I started planning to be an artist and trying to be an artist, definitely more things like that yeah. began to occur, which is awesome. So how would you describe your style? With uh, the, okay, so let me, let me back that up a little bit. That, that's kind of a loaded question. Uh, how did you get to the finger paint aesthetic and then what about it kept you doing it good question my style i i mean i guess i've never mentioned anything about like the festival scene or like you know you know a lot of my early 20s before i discovered painting i was spending you know going to concerts you know being around a lot of free expression and color and just energy and just, you know, all of that. That so, whole thing. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that whole, whole thing. I digress, that whole thing. 
So a lot of like, and then I found the term visionary artist, you know, through that scene and kind of like to attach myself to that. And that's like, I, I don't want to do a misjust like as artists to try to bring to life, like stuff they see during like visual states or, you know, just like the other dimensions you try to like visualize that. And I feel like a lot of my art kind of has that to it with the finger painting because of this the distortion and the movement and the depth that you can find in them so i like to you know i'm trying to jump in on to the visionary artist kind of scene in that respect but just very abstract you know very abstract oh printalism is a Ooh, term okay yes there you go printalism I thought I think I saw you mention that somewhere previously, or maybe you said that to me in in passing. Somewhere. Yeah, because that cra- that's a term that came from craft fair. It's like, oh, is this pointillism? Like, right, because I, I say it like that, like, dots. and I took I took offense at the time. You know what I mean? It was like because I didn't really want to be copying anything. So right. Like as an artist, I was like, oh, I guess I am doing that. Like it, like, but then you know, eventually I leaned into it and I was like, oh no, it's printillism. Well, I mean, you have you have a legit like, yeah, because it's your fingerprint. You have a legit claim to that term. Yeah, because uh, nothing about that and is I a lie. To, I forgot about that till now, so yeah. I feel like that's a good way to to describe does, it. Does that make you a printalist? I, I guess. Or are so. you a person that practices printalism? Because printalist sounds just ridiculous. I'd rather I would, be an artist. I think. I would, just don't <laughs> box don't box me out of that term. <laughs> an artist that does printalism, printalism with it. Yeah. <laughs> But can you imagine telling somebody that you practice printillism and they just... Yeah. <laughs> that cracks me up. I would love that slightly awkward Maybe once I'm a little ears. more, you know, up there, <laughs> I can start making my own terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be making one. up words and stuff. <laughs> messing with people. That's in the visions, you know. you got to dream big. <laughs> no, actually, what I do the is this very day. sophisticated category of art yeah. called printillism. No, I think I, it's definitely the best way to describe it because I'm doing more complicated images now mm-hmm. with it because at first it was just very abstract. You know, like my first venture into it, like I painted a big six foot by four foot painting and it was very simple with just like a gradient of blue. And then I just started doing twirls of fingerprints on it that I was like imagining to be, you know, like minnows or fish. My vision was like looking at the sun from underwater was kind of like my vision for the painting and i painted it in one day you know just a huge canvas with my hand painted it in one day was on live painted it and i sold it to one of my friends for six hundred dollars like that day and like this is like way like not like like that's i'm not gonna shout out to my man but it's like a big painting like really painted quick and then that was like oh so people like this yeah Oh, so yeah, so I was like, so that, and that was years ago when I like first, yeah, so I've gone so far, it's crazy to think about that. Yeah, well, like, when you, uh, that when was you, three years ago when I sold that one. What is it? Uh, hindsight's twenty twenty right there. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was like, and then I was like, oh my God, so yeah, finger painting, but then just, it was just color gradients, you mm-hmm. know, just all different shades at once, moving in and out of layers on each other. Like you can never tell which color I did last, you know, just all the different colors going in and out twirling spinning so that i fell in love with that and i did that for and then you know what's next like i mentioned earlier then i was like well what can i put on top of this well when when did you start messing around with the sunflowers so that was was that shortly shortly after when i was like what can i put on top of that because you saw like the sunflowers were huge because that's that's sort of start that was like around when you and i first started really you know yeah being, being chatty Maybe a year was that a year ago? Yeah, somewhere somewhere around. So that was the first time I started putting images on my like gradient backgrounds. Okay. Yeah. So and you did and you did a good uh, like a a small run of sunflowers. Oh, I was I've sold out. I've never like my sun like I need to make more sunflowers now. (laughs) (laughs) Now that I think about it. Yeah. Now you mentioned it, I need to make more sunflowers. But but you. But that was the the epiphany with the three D glasses because they layered out perfectly. Yeah. Like it was just mind blowing because I love blue and it was like oh, it just worked out great. But yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's a whole other. But then you've gotten more complex and and uh... now I feel like there's nothing I can't do. Right, with my I mean fingers. you yeah, just like, you just did that the the bears playing poker or whatever. Yeah. So you went from the sunflowers to the bears playing poker in a year, sixteen yeah. months, something like that. Yeah. So you you've really like made the progress in the content 
and the context of what you've been putting on top of this. Yeah. I think it's awesome. I love that bear piece. That, yeah, no, that I think it's, yeah, I think that's my best piece by far. And it was just like an image I got from my head. Like I just drew it with my hand, not really looking at much, you know, and just kind of let it build itself and didn't really worry about too much. And then, you know, someone bought that real quick, one of my collectors. So like even that was like like it was for sale for maybe a day. Like when I finished <laughs> when I finished that it. That feels so like, good. Yeah, it feels so good. Yeah. And uh and shout out to um being a coffee house who's been putting up my artwork here in Alco. Like they've actually led for me getting a job. Like I'm a private art teacher now. Like I teach private art lessons. Nice. Like only on Tuesday, like little thirty minute classes with one on one art lessons and I love that. And but uh yeah, so the the three bears playing poker, you gotta check it out. And I'm working on uh, some a whole beer, bear series. Oh, yeah? So I got three bears and a canoe right now Uh-oh. in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like a mama bear taking two little babies down the stream. That and, sounds awesome. Yeah. Really big paintings, like four foot by four yeah, foot. Yeah, you don't do a whole lot of small stuff. Well, it's hard to do small detail when, you're, when, you're, <laughs> when you're like, your, your, your imprint is the size of your finger. So yeah. it's like the smallest thing you can do is that big. Well, I mean, what you had in the spring sock show, you had one that was like, four by five and five by six something like that yeah and i sold it yeah yeah the ganesha painting yeah shout out bob yeah ganesha painting man i had no idea i would sell that thing like who wants a six foot tall ganesha like in their Uh, living room i think he has it just sitting in his kitchen like on the wall (laughs) oh so when i did sock show in october he purchased uh, a piece from both chance and i man he's a man dude i love that guy yeah He's he's something else. Friend of the people. So uh, shout out him for supporting the local art scene. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, that was another aha moment. Anytime I sold, you know, like I never took it for granted. Like it right. just added fuel to the fire. No, and and, and it was really cool to, to, the to watch that too because it was really I felt good curating the show, watching you have that success for you by yeah, you, like yeah. all putting it all together. It felt really that. good for me. From and it was weird because like watching people be successful at a show i put together it's it's not bittersweet in any way it's just uh it's it's really cool when the best case scenario happens sure so like anytime i put a bunch of people's art on a wall and somebody sells something or everybody sells something like that's the best part of that for me because obviously i love getting everybody's artwork together and creating the spectacle of the uh, of the yeah, conclave it. it's always but so like when fun. people are like i need that in my house that's the like the next level it makes me feel so good for going through all the effort to put everything together that's that's almost as good as selling my own painting yeah, you're, making, <laughs> you're making me want to curate some art shows you want to be in an art show dude? No, i love it man <laughs> it, it if i if i if i wasn't painting or creating in some way i would probably spend way more time curating shows yeah because if i can't since I can do both, I love doing both. So I get I get torn between the two of them. But I try to make them both happen as best I can. Well, I think you're doing a good job, man. Well, I try really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and dude, and I, I get to meet really cool people like you, like Mallory, like Chance, and uh, all you know, like Blaine. I'd never met. I didn't meet Blaine in person until he showed up to hang his work. I just the whole sort of scenario, like reached out to him on the internet and. He showed up and everything was cool. Connecting the pieces. I, I try, man. It's it's a lot of fun. It's very gratifying when you like, you know, it's like I've never played Yahtzee, but I'd imagine when never it's like, I've never played Yahtzee, but That's like it. you shake the dice and then you get what you want, you know, out of all the things that could happen, the thing you wanted happen happens. That feels really good. Yeah, that's what happens when you start when you quit your job and you start <laughs> and you start making art. <laughs> when, when you take the leap of faith and don't know what to do and everything's really stressful for a while. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just move in with your grandmother and you know everything's cool. Everything everything's starts falling in, in line. <laughs> no, I, I, my, my family. You can't do what I've done to chase my dream without the most supportive family, like ever. So I just have to say that, like, not everyone has the opportunity to move in with their grandmother, live rent free and do art and like take over the garage and sell paintings. Like, <laughs> yeah. So but I am grateful for that. But if you do, if you're hearing this and you do, then it, it, you gotta, it can work. Yeah, so <laughs> it you, can work. You got to do it. It can work. So, uh, you're working on the canoe piece right now, or you got mm-hmm. anything else in the works currently? Oh yeah, man. Yeah. I have like the, my biggest show I think I've put together since my show with you at the same place at right. the same so, venue, full circle uh 
this this we're recording this in the future of of uh of of friday the 13th right yeah, yeah. so this is this is the wednesday before friday the 13th when this being recorded and luke has a show uh that that uh opens friday the 13th at what like seven o'clock something yeah, like that yeah i think I'll, I'll just go up there at some point and just be painting all day right. yeah, yeah but uh uh is it'll be the december showcase for luke love at the holistic connection and um this ep- this episode will be out friday morning so if someone was so inclined they could go see your show and listen to the podcast yeah. at the same time or one right after the other or maybe days apart but i would encourage the listeners to go do them at the same time or close together (laughs) if if you like luke's art and you're walking around and you found out that there's a podcast episode about it you should definitely listen to the podcast episode i mean the holistic connection is the place where it's at has the biggest most beautiful brick wall my art looks absolutely amazing on it even if you don't you know aren't familiar with the holistics connection connections operations you need to go and you got to see just see the big beautiful brick wall with all my art all my 3d finger paintings they all are they're all animal themed they're all done just by hand you know and i'll I'll hook you up and then i'll be there live painting one i think i'm gonna take the the bear and the canoes up there even though it's big but i'll find a corner to make my own but yeah no i'm super grateful for them letting me put my art up there i'm i'm I love my show. I'm proud of it. And yeah. how many pieces you're gonna have? I have thirteen. Thirteen? Yeah. Dang, you're gonna fill that wall up. I have no. It's already. They're already up. Oh, they're already up. Yeah, they're already okay. up. I put them up like a week and a half ago. Ooh, no, I have. Goodness. I have like seven three by three paintings. I have two six by four. Like they're all really big. The whole wall is covered. Yeah. I cover the entire wall with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that feels good all by itself. Yeah. Being able to cover the whole wall, and it's not a small wall. No, it's like, not. Yeah, we had. When you and I and did my the first piece of furniture. Furniture? Yeah. I painted a rocking chair. What? I yeah. don't know if I've seen that. Yeah, I covered my rocking chair with like my blue twirly fingerprint fingerprints. I'm gonna have to go check you that out. You can sit in it, man. That's interactive yeah, art right there. Yeah, That's you performance can, art. You can sit in it. You can sit in <laughs> and I got yeah, and I got the three D glasses, you can sit in it, you can, you know, do what you want and look around at some trippy, trippy artwork. Mm, that sounds, sounds like, like an evening. So as you're here in this Friday, hopefully you should definitely go check out luke's work at the holistic connection and uh shout out to the holistic connection for being super friendly to local artists like ourselves yeah no, they're and awesome. uh they've always treated you and me really really nice so uh dare i complain that place is awesome this is where I, if i cared i would shout out that i'm a brand rep and if you say if you go up to cash out <laughs> and say hey i've got this brand rep code Name Zachary, you'll get fifteen percent off and, if you tell them my last name at the cash register when you're going to you go purchase Christian it. And canvas classes going on. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so the cushion canvas is on hiatus for the winter. Oh, well, I mean for December, really. We'll have another one in late uh, in late January sometime because people are going to be tired of shit after after New Year's and stuff. So late January is the play. Um, also, I want to talk to you about you doing one of those at some point. Uh, if you, if you, oh, not, yeah, yeah. not to put you on the spot well, in front of the funny. microphone, you just read my mind. I kind of zoned out there. I was like, <laughs> like thinking about what I would paint at that because I was already like picturing myself. No, doing I, one. I do, I do I really like, want you to do one because I could do one where people did it with their finger. You mm-hmm. know, I kind of talked them through my entire process with that. Well, Chance did one simple. with the screen print stuff, mm-hmm. and then um, Abby did one that was like a collage class, and then you can do this one. And I just, you know, it's just a neat little. I feel like it's making a, a kind of a little artist community spot for it. And, you know, I'm not trying to be selfish with the cushion canvas events. I want, no, I think it's awesome. I want other yeah, people no, to do like other it. stuff. So yeah, if you want one, just say when we'll figure it out. I got you. So it, it, it'll be cool. I have no doubts. Right on. But uh, yeah, in January, those will fire back up and we'll see how they go throughout the year. But uh, so far, They've all been well received, and I think I did like sixteen months. So I think so far, other than other than this month that that's we're going to skip, run. yeah, no, that's cool. We've, we've done good with the event series, and it's it's stayed alive through management changes at the venue, <laughs> which is always a task. So it's been good. Now, like I said, they treat us really well at the Holistic Connection, and I'm thankful that they allow me to be the goofy, creative person I am whenever I call them with crazy ideas. 
Yeah, and I'll keep putting artwork up in there. Yeah, as long as like, whenever, whenever they want me to, I'll put art up in that building. Yeah, no question another thing I like to bring about Knoxville in general is like right when I moved here, I was on Knoxville page and then it showed all the businesses that accept art and I emailed them all and I was in businesses here with my art like in months. Yeah. Like coming up here. Yeah. So. so that so that like dovetails into the question of like as a creative person, how has Knoxville treated you? Sounds like it's pretty darn well. Oh yeah. No, with open hands, man, open arms. I've live like immediately was live painting in pubs and like I wouldn't like I was hustling. I was like, Can I live paint like for free? Like, you know, sure I'd get a drink or two every now and then, but I'd just go put my artwork up and just sit up an easel and just, you know, start painting on yeah. something just to hand out business cards, what have you. But no, Knoxville is an amazing place to come as a as an artist. They really have a like great downtown place for it the brick man every single business <laughs> yeah, every the, single the buildings business are old enough to have really nice brick really walls. nice brick man i love hanging <laughs> on there there's like a feeling that comes with it when you like step back and it's just like all on like a huge brick wall like 10 like 15 foot tall mm-hmm. yeah i think i think it's like 12 by 30 or something like yeah. that at the holistic connection no oh, it's awesome it's uh, a, you definitely got to see my art and in, it's that in old person. brick that's the way to experience it yeah, because looking like there's your work has so much texture to it that you lose a lot looking at it yeah, through a screen. And I think that's where the next level is with my art. The more I'm like painting, it's like okay, I've like okay, I can pretty much do any image, but now I want to like each part of it that's you know supposed to be more in front of the other yeah. part to like li- really have that represent represented like all the pieces that are like coming out at you, which takes I use acrylic paint, so yeah, all of my paint is acrylic paint. Just I'll stir it up and just like put it on there with my finger and big blobs. So you got to wait for it to dry if you want to do another layer. Mm-hmm. So it takes time in that regard. But yeah, so that's I feel like is next is just keeping a painting until it's completely text like which could take <laughs> for, yeah it's just holding on to it instead of selling it for like because I'm getting used to like needing the money. So it's like before I don't think I've ever fully brought a painting to its full fruition, like ever, not one of mine. You know, 80, 90 percent. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, around there. I would give that that. But like eventually I'm just like, like I'm done working on it. I'll display it and then someone like wants to buy it and I'll sell it. But it's like it never fully got there. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) Like just because of the complexity, like, you know, every artist, like we're not, you know, it's it's yeah, our own worst. Yeah, yeah. It's like, but there was like, I wanted this. Yeah, but there's this one dot over (laughs) here yeah but i've gotten really good at getting like letting go of my work though which is something a lot of artists struggle like if you talk to a lot of people who want to become an artist they're like oh "Oh, well everything's their baby yeah i get this like the less i'll tell people like how much i sold one of my paintings for which is like granted i'm not you know it's i know it's not a lot but they'll like immediately be like oh so like oh you took a loss on that (laughs) <laughs> or like I got I got that comment of like last time I sold I was like told the lady like what so oh, do you mind if I ask you what I sold for and I'm like oh yeah so so she's like oh so you took a loss and it's like wait like, <laughs> like I'm uh, that's your perception of this okay no I was like stoked uh, so it's like I guess it looks like my paintings take longer than they do to be fair because yeah kinda, and also most but, people don't know how long yeah but selling take. art is hard it is oh that's really, the hardest really, part really really really, really hard Dude, that, is, that has to be the hardest part because like at this point i think you and i are pretty deep into our creative selves and our sure. practices that like making art as difficult as it is is nowhere near as difficult as standing behind your table making sure somebody can take it home like, right. that's all like that's always been the hardest part for me but I did start making art from a place where I want everyone to be able to afford it. Right. So that's where I take stand my ground on some of my my prices. You know what yeah. I mean? I'll forever stand my ground on that. Like, no, well, this, yeah, I want, maybe they couldn't. If it was any higher, they wouldn't have it in their home right now. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, how about yeah. that? <laughs> and, and ultimately, you don't want to keep it. Yeah. No, I have no room. No, I have no room. Right. I have no room. Take the painting, please. Like, it's like, take I it. brought these here out of my house in hopes that they would not return to my house. No, my, my grandmother, every time she gets home, like, oh, we're going to have to get you a storage shed. <laughs> and then I'm thinking about the paintings that are half finished that I'll have to go drive to go get if I want to start working on it again. And I'm mm-hmm. like, no, they'll go rot forever. Like, no, I can't. No, no storage shed. So yeah, buy my paintings. I'll hook you up. Let's go. But, Right. And they'll appreciate, you know, this is an investment in someone who's going to keep working hard and keep raising, you know, raising the bar. So get in at the, you know, get in at the IPO. This is, this is, the, <laughs> this is the spot. 
<laughs> this is the spot, the Luke Love. The Luke Love, Luke Love IPO. Meme, the meme porn's dropping. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, so so what's next, man? Where's where is the style of Luke Love headed? Uh You've got you're adding complexity, you're adding depth. What else you got? Going? Well, yeah. So the I'm getting back into the festival scene a little bit when it comes to live painting and being like a featured artist. That was like a, always a dream of mine, a dream I made come true this past year. Shout out to Flow Jam for giving me the opportunity to be a featured artist where I live painted like next to a main stage, you know, and ended up selling that painting to someone who said they watched me do it and had like a connection with it. And they were like super emotional and like, you know, they probably would have gave me what, you know, like they just fell in love with the painting. And like, so that like, I get chills now thinking about that interaction because that (laughs) that was just lovely, you know, because she was like, I watched you paint all night. And it was just like, yeah. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. So, yeah. So like some more of that like would be awesome more live painting yeah you know, I love any fe- live painting. like free festival tickets to go camp and this you know be free and share my expression and like you know give that joy to other people like the joy of like creating art and then also like art music's an art you're just surrounded by art people yeah. are dre- wearing art like it's just a great so more of that like through my art would be would be awesome more murals you know just more bigger just just more but more yeah <laughs> more no more <laughs> and more finger paintings yeah, <laughs> yeah. more texture <laughs> you know that's 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 the best answer i can give you more texture yeah. that's what's next that is what's more next. m-o-a-r more <laughs> more texture <laughs> museum you know yeah, <laughs> yeah eventually yeah no i mean i, I saw i was in the uh, Atlanta Museum, there's like 21 year olds are being represented in, mm-hmm. in museums. You know, it's like not something crazy. It's not like old. It's, it's, it's not it's as gatekeepy now. now. Yeah, yeah. That's so why I felt like it was crazy. I was like, oh, okay. You know, so that's more of a vision now. It's like, that's a thing. Religious pieces. Yeah. I want a religious, I want multiple art shows that I can show at once. So, like, right now I have like the 3D finger paintings up there, and then I want like, 10 paintings of like bears that I can show. Then I want, you know, themed curated art shows, like just more paintings. I might need a storage shed. <laughs> I won't tell you any. Uh, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll leak some plans right now for you. Sock show five All right. is going to be hopefully in May. And it's going to be downstairs in the lounge at, uh, can I get some of my lights? going yes. on it that, because, that's, that's what i'm telling yeah, you yeah my art has so much depth that i can just go on about like the lights changing color well what i'm getting at is that this show is going to be like a uv only oh. like full-on lean into the spectacle like, oh, i'm ready yeah <laughs> full, full uv full lighting effects like the whole nine yards so we're going to do the whole wall the whole brick wall downstairs in the in the spellbound vintage shop and uh just you know the wall to the opposite side of the room from the stairs yeah. And they've got uh, black light LED panels on. The, oh yeah, no, I can see it. No, I already, yeah. I was already. Yeah, you're. Yeah, you're that's that's the right plan for for the first big show of 2025. That's what's up. Sounds good to me. Well, just it, you don't have to. So let me know. <laughs> yeah, I'll put I'll put one work up at least. I so, won't take up too much. Today. So let me know. We'll make it happen because Chance and I have already discussed it, and that's that's it's like, you know, like 80 percent we're gonna go do it. So I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, that's cool. Man. You heard it here third, folks, because I'm pretty sure I've said it on the podcast previously. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah, that should be neat. Um I'm excited once again. The holistic connection treats us really well. Um where like moonshot projects, you got any like big shit in the pipeline? Um that, that isn't under the category of what I just asked you. <laughs> <laughs> Not right now. No, besides, I've been wrapped up in my Bull Bear series. I mean, that's just what I'm kind of, all my focus is wrapped up in right now. Because I just started it. Yeah. Well, yeah, my first craft fair up here, like I have, I'm from St. Simon's Island. So I came from the beach to the mountains and all I had was like fish and octopus (laughs) and like blue stuff. And like. Now it's bears. It was crazy. Yeah, I got like everyone no one bought anything but i think i got 10 like you need more bears like i got <laughs> six, like i heard bears like six times so. people look at you across the table are you from the beach yeah no like <laughs> it was, yeah so i was like That's right cool. if I, I did sell one little picasso so i did make 20 dollars that craft fair but, hey hey but i began the the bear series which is ultimately my best series right now so i got that from the craft fair and you can't 
put money on that. So no, sure can't. That's a lot of my a lot of my story is you don't get any money, but you do make progress. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> and money is how yeah, how but, valuable is the learning experience? Like you, can, yeah, exactly. You cannot assign a Thank value for to the learning that experience. Better than I did. It's priceless. Yeah. Because it's going to give you ideas and notions and perspective that you could have never paid for. Mm-hmm. And that and that all by itself is is immeasurably valuable. That's one thing painting did do for me. Like it did exactly what I thought. I've just gotten better. I've never stopped, and you know, and that's that's I won't ever stop. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and I, I learned so. You just learn. Why would you just needlessly stop something that you enjoy and makes you feel good? Right. Like why? And and that's one of the funny things too. Like sometimes I stop and think about my life. It's like, what would I do if I never started doing? Dude, you shit? just don't. Like, let, I don't. I can't think of. <laughs> I know. That. I would never. I can't. I can't uh, articulate that thought in a way that pleases me. Like, what would I do? Well, I have no clue. No, and anything I, I would think of sounds like garbage. Where would I be if yeah. I never stopped and started painting? Like, oh my gosh. I'm gonna blame the duct tape wallets. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to drop out of school, you know, just sell this. Like, and that was pre like really big internet. Like I could have been on like, you know, yeah, no. <laughs> could have been on QVC. Huckins, yeah. Huckins, some duct tape wallets. These are handmade free range duct tape wallets. Horn I would sell free. those for 15. Yes. yes I would yes. sell the wallets for $15. But my lucrative thing was the bracelets, man. Cause people would even request colors, but yeah. I'd be like, oh I, yeah, I, I got you. I still like just the, the, <laughs> the mental image of you as a young teenager, like, whipping your backpack around your chest and like unzipping the duct tape backpack and like reaching in and grabbing like six rolls of duct tape and be like, I got what yeah, you I'd have, need. I'd have them on my arm. Oh like, my what's, God. what's up? <laughs> <laughs> like their watches. It gets, like it their gets watches. better. <laughs> like their watches. That's so funny. Uh, I had a, I had a, a buddy of mine a while back. He said his hustle in middle school was like, he would take um, uh, pieces of, like he would take like uh, Tootsie Pops and and Blow Pops and stuff and and cover them with a second layer of like hard candy so you'd have a three flavored lollipop. So he's doing like some alchemy stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's being you know doing <laughs> wizard shit. But that was that was his hustle and he got in trouble too. So it's all kinds of funny. Always Can't, hustling. Well, you son, you can't be competing with the school concessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know <laughs> the man got him too. <laughs> they need their taxes. It was all tax free. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't, can't have that. They got to get their cut. Yeah. Gotta speaking of which, I was able. Like, I did a whole year where I didn't have a single job and like applied as like a freelance artist on my Turbo Taxes and stuff like that. Hey. So I can say I'm an artist. You know, if there was right. some like a uh, guilt or like. Well, I mean, t- if you at least sold one, right? One, yeah. If you sold I'm one legit- art, I'm a that's all you needed. Right that's all yeah. you needed technically. <laughs> that's all you needed technically no i love it it's uh, yeah it's fun so if you could tell young you one thing that you've learned being you now how young i would say well, start uh, painting now like <laughs> <laughs> i'm like whenever i lost is. so many years yeah you know i could have started so much sooner <laughs> yeah, so, so the advice is regardless of age start painting now yeah. And that's to anyone. Yeah, yeah, that's my advice to anyone. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to be painting, just create create something, you know. Like it feels good. Like in this day and age day and age, you gotta have some sort of outlet, creative outlet, oh, yeah. like, uh, whatever it is. Like you gotta you gotta fight that powers that be, make your own stuff. <laughs> you know? It's it, it, it's funny being a creative person in this pre packaged single use society, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh if there was anyone that you suggest I have in your seat that you would like to hear on the podcast, who would that be? Oh, that's a great question. I've not. I don't know everybody. I gotta ask. Yeah, I'm new to Knoxville, so I don't. <laughs> no one comes to mind. Being new to the area, that would be good for the Knoxville, but. Well, that's okay. Yeah. That's, that's usually I the, need more friends here. <laughs> that's usually the question that puts I just people on I spend all my time in the garage, so I'm not surprised. All right. Well, Luke, it's uh, it's right at an hour now. Tell people where they can find you on the internet, and then we can uh, sign off out of this thing. Sure, man. Yeah, no, it's Luke Love underscore artwork on all socials. Website is not up and running just yet, so if anybody, you know, website developer out there wants to holler at me, that's where you can find me as well. Well, yeah, come to my show on Friday. Yeah, come to the show on Friday. 
and the show will be up for the rest of the month. Oh, I guess you're listening to this. It's long past Friday. Well, by, for most I, I would hope. I would hope that they listen to this <laughs> when it drops Friday morning at eight a.m. But give me a shout. Let me let me make you a painting. Yeah, uh, open for commissions. Uh-huh. Does do custom work. Yeah, is, is happily not. and excitedly doing custom work. Yep, that's a rarity these days. Yeah, but uh, you know, otherwise, do what you, you got to do. He's got plenty of bears laying around right now that he would love to put in your house. <laughs> yeah. I do got. I have the bears, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I got the bears. The bears. The bears. <laughs> but uh Luke, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. I appreciate thanks. your time and energy and intention sitting here talking smack and shop with me. And uh I'm Thomas Zachary. This has been the latest episode of the KAAMP. That is the Knoxville Area Artist Network and Platform Podcast thing. Um if you want to support the show. You can first and foremost buy my artwork at TTW underscore artworks on the Instagrams or TTW artworks on the Facebooks. You can find me at either of those places. Um, You can also go to the Red Zachary Creative uh, Etsy shop. That is my catch all name and place on the internet for my web based creative endeavors. So if you need a KAANP hoodie, or a uh, KAAMP fridge magnet. Which the hoodie looks super nice and professional, by the way. Oh, they're, they're, oh let me let me talk about it. hoodie. I saw it. It is a legit hoodie. Like when you were getting all the stuff out and wearing that hoodie, I was like, okay. <laughs> so the, the cool thing about the logo is that it's my handwriting. And I'm, okay, I'm probably nice. going to change it up next year because you're five. I, I'll, I'll change logos. It'll be fine. I'll still design it, but it'll be different. Uh, but these are the really soft, like Gildan hoodies, mm-hmm. and you should no, always get like no, two worked. sizes. I definitely too admired big. it. Yeah, it's a good hoodie. They're super comfy. If you've ever worn a Gildan hoodie in your life, those are ex- the expectations you should have of this hoodie because they are. They yeah, I might are have to give me absolutely. one. Absolutely. You get a discount or something for being. I'll, I'll hook you up. <laughs> I'll hook you up. Uh, but go go to the Red Zachary Creative. That's a great way to support the show. That's an Etsy shop. Blah blah blah. Um, if you don't want to spend money, you can also support the show in the way that you can share it with your friends, uh, listen to it, rate it, comment, you know, all that good stuff that everybody else tells you to do. But uh, bottom line, I really appreciate that you find folks take the time to listen and occasionally talk to me about the stuff that I do here. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Luke, thank you. Yeah, man. This has been the latest episode of the KAAMP. Cue the outro music. Bye, everybody. Mm-hmm.